Did you know Boeing almost pulled the trigger on an unducted fan airliner back in 1992? It would be the successor to the Boeing 727 and replace the Boeing 737, changing short haul flying forever. Today, it may even be the template for Boeing's next aircraft, the Boeing 797. Let's explore the never built 7J7. Hey, it's me, Nick here from Found and Explained. If you like this video today, then don't forget to check out the rest of the channel and subscribe. The 1980s was an exciting time in aviation. Airbus had entered the scene. The A300 is our biggest new investment. And rivalry between aerospace builders was entering a fever pitch. On a cool morning in March 1984, Airbus smugly revealed to the world the Boeing 737 killer, the Airbus A320. So of course, Boeing needed something to trump its rival by the Paris Air Show the very next year. And they entered it with an elaborate mock-up of an incredible machine that would only come seven years later, the Boeing 7J7. That is 32 inches wider than the Airbus A320. The Boeing 7J7 was designed for a 150-seater market, already flying thousands of older Boeing 737s, some of which were approaching approaching 20 years old. It also needed to replace the 727 and the McDonnell Douglas DC-9, focusing on domestic routes and pan-European travel around 2,000 nautical miles. Boeing had previously tried to replace the 727 with the Boeing 757, but sales were poor, and it turns out airlines wanted frequency over a bigger narrowbody. Essentially, it was better for customers to have more options of flight times than for the airline to save on airframes. So Boeing needed a new aircraft to fill the gap between the Boeing 737 and the Boeing 757, and it had to do it in a time of competition and high jet fuel prices. Thus, this is why Boeing went for an engine design that was incredibly unique, the prop fan. By having the fans on the outside of the jet engine, Boeing promised jet-like speeds, but for a fraction of the fuel cost, a difference of 60% to the nearest other jet flying back that day. The engine had propellers with two rows of blades spinning in opposite directions to reduce losses due to swirl, energy wasted in imparting spin to the air behind the aeroplane. Both would be installed on the aeroplane's tail, not under the wings, to allow room for a proper disc and to keep the noise out of the cabin. This plane would also feature fly-by-wire controls, a glass computerized cockpit much like the L-1011, and high strength carbon fiber throughout. In its first public design iteration, passengers on board would have been treated to a twin aisle cabin of 222, with no passenger more than one seat from an aisle. The twin aisle design would cut boarding times by 10 minutes over single aisles and make the aircraft perfect for commuter routes between major cities of a range of 2,700 nautical miles. Boeing would also propose a high weight version that had extra fuel tanks in the wings and could fly 4,250 nautical miles. To share the financial risks of this $4 billion project, Boeing enlisted corporate partners from three different countries. The Japanese, hence the J in the 7J7, had the biggest share of the program, 25%. This was also followed by Saab of Sweden and Britain's short bros who each had smaller stakes. But Boeing was guaranteed that it was maintaining at least a 51% share of the project. Each Boeing 7J7 would have a list price of around $28 million, which today is $67 million. Pitching the design to the market came with mixed reactions. SAS wanted a denser version of the plane with a 2-3-2 seating configuration for economy travelers and was contemplating becoming the launch customer. However, other customers were skeptical as the engine technology was unproven at the time. So why was it never built? The first problem was that the design was constantly changing. 
Now, you see, this is where it starts to get confusing. In 1986, Boeing proposed a small version of the 7J7, seating 115 passengers called the 7J7-110, but then retracted it, switching the concept to its Boeing 737 line. At one point during this year, customers could also choose between a prop fan or a jet engine. But then Boeing cancelled the jet option, recommitting to a prop fan, only to have the prop fan manufacturer reveal delays the very next day, missing the 1992 launch date. By June 1st, 1987, Boeing was approaching its deadline to either make the plane or get out completely. And so far, there were only three major airlines that had shown any interest. SAS, who wanted to be the launch partner with a commitment for 100 7J7 aircraft. British Airways wanted 35 7J7s to replace their 737-200 aircraft. And American Airlines wanted 100 units of a stretched version, seating up to 170 passengers. It's this stretched version that really threw a spanner in the works of this project. The engine was already at its limit for this aircraft and Boeing was concerned that it would paint themselves into a corner if an airline asked for an even bigger version of the 7J7 with 200 seats. Until we hammer it down to one size, the 7J7 won't go, said Dean Thornton, president of Boeing Commercial Aeroplane, back in 1987. In an interview, he said the most confusing part of the decision-making process is trying to pinpoint the airplane's exact starting size. And without knowing where to start, Boeing was not going to go. By December 1987, Boeing paused the production of the aircraft indefinitely. There are also some other concerns about why this aircraft never went ahead. For one, airlines were skeptical that these planes were as quiet as other jet aircraft, with the fans being exposed out in the open. Plus, this plane only flew at Mach 0.84, which is faster than a turboprop, but slower than most jet aircraft today. That 10 minutes saved at the airport would have been lost in flight. And then there is also the curious case of the Boeing sales agent in Germany called Rudi Hillinger who in the 1980s was in talks with Lufthansa for the 7J7. Allegedly, she threw the plane under the bus in favour for an order of Boeing 737s, not believing in the type and convincing Lufthansa otherwise, making Boeing miss out on a huge order which could be considered inside job. Lastly, the Boeing 7J7 was made for an era of fuel uncertainty. By the late 1980s, fuel prices had dramatically fallen and the Western world had secured a new oil supply. With fuel now cheap again, the 7J7 didn't really have much of a purpose and then was never built. Today, we can very much see that the Boeing 7J7 was a precursor to Boeing's next needed aircraft. A twin aisle, 500 nautical miles range, 200 seater aircraft dubbed the Boeing 797. Had the Boeing 7J7 been built back in the 1980s, it is likely that today we would see a very different market indeed. Although one where perhaps even the Boeing 737 wouldn't have been as successful for Boeing. Thanks so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed the very strange tale of the Boeing 7J7 and I can't wait to see your thoughts in the conversation down below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.